the Benston Hedges Cup final on a lovely sunny day at Lords with a full house and a tremendous atmosphere. Essex, probably favourites, having won this cup before in 1979, and Knott's defeated finalists back in 1982. Well, the toss was between Graham Gooch and Tim Robinson, former England batting partners. And the toss won, in fact, by Graham Gooch, who sees a very firm pitch out there, quite shiny, and decides to bat first, and this is the lineup. Five test players to each side. Overseas cricketers Mark Waugh, brother of Steve in the Essex side. He was capped just before the match. And Franklin Stevenson, the tall West Indian fast bowler, who took 125 wickets in the championship last season. So let's join it now with the third ball of the third over. Stevenson's bowling to Hardy, and the score is four for no wicket. Well, there's the slow ball, and Stevenson boasts that he's got two different ones, and very deceptive they are, and certainly that one caused Harvey all sorts of problems. Yes, there's no doubt about it. Brian Hardy, you saw him suddenly turn away, and obviously lost that altogether, no idea what it was, and... Uh, it's not a big sight screen at the uh, pavilion at Lords, and it is possible that just disappeared over the top of the sight screen. But uh, I know most people who've played against Stevenson reckon he bowls the best slow ball in the game. Another slow one, bowled him! And there it is, the ball that Stevenson caused Hardy with trouble before, and he seemed to lose that one again. Away goes his stumps, Essex four for one, Hardy bowled by Stevenson for a duck. Well, it was brilliantly bowled by Stevenson. He realised that Hardy hadn't seen that previous slow delivery. And I'm sure again there that Hardy, we've watched that again in slow motion, his head was again turned away from it like he'd lost it. Now, certainly well bowled by Stevenson. Now watch his head closely here. And you can see there, he obviously lost that again, jabbed down it, probably got a little inside edge onto the stumps. Well, what a start for Stevenson. And for nuts, and Alan Lilly, the new batsman. Oh, that's a great shot. Full half volley, and Gooch needs no second invitation for those. Now, Gooch certainly got the full bat on it that time. Early into position there, and then the lovely on drive. First boundary of the day, and that takes Gooch into double figures. There goes the slow one again. And he does pitch it well. Yeah, it was certainly well bowled. Gooch didn't duck. He, he played it pretty well, so he must have sighted it all right. But again, it did look to dip quite a lot, and it was almost... Well, it was a Yorker again. And any attempt to drive could probably have been disastrous there for Gooch. Certainly well bowled. That's four more. Over-pitching. It just needs one over in these competitions to suddenly tilt the balance from one side to the other. Yes, yeah, over pitching there and angled in again, and that really is just what Graham Gooch likes. Kevin Cooper now to bowl for Nottinghamshire at the nursery end. And again, Gooch has got it away, that's four more. His fourth four. Well, that's a better shot. That's really where he should be hitting the ball. That pitch just outside the off stump, coming onto off stump, and Gooch hitting that within the return crease back. And that's the area they should be really aiming. That's playing it pretty straight. That's a beautiful shot. 
Well, it was the obvious shot. It was a half volley, and you'd expect a class player to go forward and drive it. But the way he actually threaded it through that placement of the offside field was superb. Yes, not much wrong with the length, just the line, really. Perhaps just fractionally over pitch, but the angled back. Just slicing it, really, just a little bit to get it through the gap to the left of extra cover. Andy Afford in Lincolnshire Bourne. Down the wicket, over the top, didn't get hold of it, it's safe. Three runs. A little bit of desperation that shot by Alan Lilly. He didn't get to the pitch, hit it across the line towards mid on. Unfortunately, just got enough button to clear mid on. Straying leg side, and that'll be four. Lilly now will feel a lot better. He has been bugged down. So Lafford there just erring down the leg side. Gooch very quick onto it with the sweep shot. No slip now. Robinson's put himself backward of square on the leg side for the sweep that both Gooch and Lily have been trying against Afford. Oh, and he's bowled him. Oh, and a delighted Andy Afford, a disappointed Graham Gooch. Going for a real hoik leg side. A vital wicket for Nottingham. Gooch bowled by Afford for 48. And in the 20th over, Essex now 74 for two. Well, good bowling by Afford. He's got eight men saving one. He's saying to the batsman, you've got to hit it over the top if you want to score runs. And causing Gooch to play... A not very responsible shot at this stage of proceedings. And just a little bit of spin there. And uh, Gooch will be disappointed there. At least there should be the legs in the front of it if you're going to play a shot like that. Certainly shouldn't be getting bowled out from a shot like that. But he went with the shot. You can see him pulling away there. Never stayed in the line of the ball. And not really a good shot. He'll be disappointed with that, Graham Gooch. He'd got off to a good start, made 48. The score was going on nicely, and really no need to do that. The war's gone for the big hit and got it. Six runs. And after just straying leg side, and more important, it was the right length to sweep. Yes, well, that was the problem that uh, the left arm spinner causes. It makes you hit over the top with all the men saving one. And Mark Wall there doing that. But as I say, it was a perfect length for sweeping. He certainly timed it very well. That's quite a big boundary for the sweep shot and carrying for six to square leg. French. Well, this is well bowled by Andy Afford. Mark Wall coming down the wicket. That ball certainly turned it, bounced a little bit, and uh, French fa uh, failed to get his hands to the ball. It molested him waist to chest eye, but certainly a clear chance. Eddie Hemmings now coming on. <laughs> 100 up, and a good decision from Mark Wall not to go for the second there. He suddenly realised it was Randall. One hundred up for the loss of two wickets. That's beautifully placed by War. 
He was beaten in the flight by Eddie Hemmings. It was very well bowled. Got down there, found that it wasn't quite there for the shot over the top, and guided it away through cover point. Straight over the top, straight over Franklin Stevenson. Lovely strike. And Alan Lilly is just one away from a half century. Mark War taking strikers on 35. He's placed that perfectly. He's got it past Derek Randall. That's Auden square leg. And between the two men in the outfield. <laughs> 41 from 65 balls for Mark War. At one stage, Alan Lilly was going along very slowly as regards runs from balls. And away we go with another wicket just before lunch. Mark War is gone. New batsmen will still have to come out, but the bowling change has worked and enforced change with Afford going off after 11 overs. Mark War goes for 41. And a very good innings indeed. Uh, got Alan Lilly running between the wickets. Uh, Mark Ward's a very good player. Didn't allow the bowling to settle, swept it away. And here we see, puts his foot down. It's not a half volley. And as it comes back into him, he clips it away off the middle of the bat, but may just have stopped a little bit. Didn't quite time it. Straight to the mid wicket. Good catch. Alan Lilly wanting one for 50. First ball after lunch, Franklin Stevenson. And there it is, that's Lily's 50. Got off to a fairly sticky start, but his innings has developed. A valuable one for Essex. And that's out. Joy there, Cooper strikes. And Essex now, 162 for four. Nice little nudge from Lily, open the face, and that's four runs. Well, Alan Lilly's certainly playing this one down to a third man. You can see he opened the face, let the ball come onto him, then just run it off down there. Lily holding things together. Oh, and that'll be four runs. And Stevenson really is a clean striker of the ball, and he's turned himself into a pretty useful all-rounder. That was a lovely shot. Yes, there wasn't many shots better than that all morning. Beautiful off-drive. Lovely follow-through. One of the strengths of Essex cricket has been the fact that when the Test players have been away, people like Stevenson have come in and done exceptionally well. Kevin Evans. If that hits it, oh, well, no need to hit. Complete mess up. Stevenson sacrifices himself. He's run out for nine. And Essex now 185 for five. Skipper Tim Robinson, he collected the ball and had 
Lilly gone, then he would have thrown, but he didn't. Stevenson kept going, sacrificed himself, and Robinson was able simply to return the ball gently to the bowler. So again, Nottinghamshire strike just when Essex were looking to really step up the tempo. New batsman Derek Pringle. Wide call. Cooper is the bowler. 200 comes up. Feel it, Randall. Very good piece of one day cricket all round. Good slower ball. Pringle just checked enough to be able to try and clip it through me. Brilliant left handed pick up and throw. And it certainly wouldn't have done Alan Lilly too much good to be a little bit further down the pitch. Trying to beat the field up. Good stroke from Derek Pringle. Quick work by Bruce French. I'm not sure that uh, Derek Pringle turned like lightning, as we might uh, say there. There wasn't much in it at the end, but just enough. Well, I suppose seven times out of ten, there's a run at the end of these matches for that sort of thing. But this one actually went behind the stumps. French was very quick. Pringle's a very big man indeed, and it takes a lot to stop and turn, and I think uh, most other people perhaps in the Essex side would have made it, but uh, Derek Pringle, six foot five and probably 15 stone, it, it takes an awful lot for him to pull on the anchors and then turn round and pays the penalty. There was certainly not a run there, and uh, still Alan Lilly remains at the other end, which is important for Essex. 2.20 for six. that one off the deep square is very square indeed in an attempt to do that job trying to cut off the runs to mid wicket but uh, this really is one of the few long hops that has been bowled today and Alan Lilly really does punish that that's one of the best shots he's played in a fairly lengthy innings today hammers it away to the tavern side uh, Tim Robinson's got the placing of the man at deep square right but has he got his bowler right can he get the bowler to pitch it just at the spot where the batsman will have to play it the way the field is placed? Slow ball, but fast off the bat. Blow a ball and Liddy sees it and times it this is a very good over from Evans he's angled the ball in the batsman's pads not giving them room to hit it bowled at least two Yorkers and a couple of well pitched up balls not quite a Yorker it's a very useful over for knots in the 54th over to catch and it is safely held, another wicket down, so that's a good blow for Nottinghamshire. Paul Johnson is the man out at long on. Garnham almost got it off the middle. Might have been better to miss cue it a little. The high full toss is certainly not a bad ball to bowl in these circumstances, and as long as it's straight. It's never that easy to hit well, particularly for a batsman who's probably only plays three or four balls anyway and is expected to come in and crash it around the field. It's uh, never easy. For all sorts of reasons, Lily would like to hit a six at the moment. A 
last scheduled ball of the innings. And take the bye. And that is the end of the Essex innings. I think both teams can be quite happy with that. Nottinghamshire fought back well. Kept Essex down to 243. At one stage it looked as though they may have made less, so the Essex players will be happy enough. It looks to me like a good contest. And that might be a very tough total to get because Essex got there the hard way. The anchor roll by Alan Lilly, 95 not out, real grafting stuff. And the strokes played around him by Gooch, 48, and War, 41, but no one really cutting loose with real fluency. That may be due to the accuracy of the bowlers, two especially. There's Kevin Evans with his two for 28, and there's Kevin Cooper with his one for 30. Fine, accurate seam bowling. So Knott's want 244 to win their Benston Hedges Cup at 4.43 runs per over. Let's join them then, the third ball of the sixth over, five for no wicket is the score, and Foster bowls to Broad. And that's the frustration of this Nottinghamshire opening pair. They're being drawn into strokes outside off stump because they can't get the scoreboard ticking over. Not really the ball to try that too by Broad, too close to him. And that's close and that's out. And that's the frustration forced upon the batsman, playing across the line because no runs were coming and young Paul Pollard, LBW to Lever, he got two. And Nottingham should now five for one. Well, that just kept a shade low, possibly, but uh, really wasn't quite short enough to pull right across the line. Shot should be playing with a straight bat off the back foot. But, as I say, JK's bowled beautifully, and again, he's right on the spot. The ball going back up the hill a little, just into the left under. Certainly not much doubt about it, but never quite short enough to play that shot to. Nottinghamshire captain, Tim Robinson. That's well stopped by Foster. It's not easy for a tall fast bowler to make any sort of contact in a follow through. Oh, wow, what a great catch that was by Garnham. That's the end of Broad. Magnificent catch. And now Nottinghamshire in some trouble, both openers gone, Broad caught at the wicket by Mike Garnham off the bowling of John Lever for six, and Nottingham 17 for two. And this is why Gucci's decision to keep this pair on was more than justified, frustrating Broad, forcing him to try something different, and that was the answer. Suddenly Essex now really buzzing. New batsman coming to the wicket is Paul Johnson. Nice stroke. The pace taken off it. And Pringle has a long chase. And an unrewarding. First pound. Skipper at the wicket. That's the area I was talking about earlier, through that gap between uh, extra cover and mid-off. That's the one at which you have to look when the bowling is uh, tactically geared this way. That they're trying to bowl to keep you hitting between mid-on, mid-off. Lever off, Pringle on. Very well stopped. <laughs> and 
And Jeff Miller stretching himself there. That was a really good piece of fielding. Now we've got Jeff Miller, and he too has just got three men on the offside, six on the leg, and he'll be bowling middle, middle and leg. Or at least he should be. That's about the first time that the ball has actually gone outside the off stump, and that'll make Paul Johnson feel a lot better. Yes, he's, he's a crisp player off the back foot, and anything erring in either line or length gets this sort of treatment. Didn't have to make all that much room. A neat little player. Oh, that's a big hit. That's what's needed from a Nottinghamshire angle. Only three fours in the innings, and now a six here from Johnson. Very good shot. It wasn't really that short, and it was straight, and just pivoted and pulled it and hit it very well. We're looking for two. Oh, and taking the arm on again. Well, great urgency now in the Nottinghamshire batting. And there's the comparisons. Nottinghamshire 26 runs adrift. Well, there's a bit of uh, veteran fielding, but very effective. Well run, Johnson. John Lever it was. Footwork might be marginally slow, but the arm isn't. Well timed shot off the back foot. Lever preferring to slide tackle it rather than to dive in the modern fashion in the modern fashion and a very good throw on the turn and a close run thing. And he's keeping the, <coughs> the extra man within the circles to start with. Three on the offside, two on the on. Well, that's four runs. And that's Tim Robinson's 50. The real captain's innings. 52 he scored. Out of 97. 83 balls. And that was the third boundary. Oh, that's four more. John Lever couldn't get down to that. Brings the hundred up. The 50 came up in the 22nd over. Sensible batting. There's really been no desperate slogging. Worked the ball around pretty well, and they ran. That's the point. Ran no runs well. There goes a big hit in the air. This might be out. Is it? It's just past Miller and for four. And that's the hundred partnership. They came together at 17 for two. And a tremendous third wicket stand. 23 overs that partnership's taken. Well, is that out or six? It's six. Just clearing the ropes, but hit with tremendous power and as good a flat hit as you'll see. Yes, I think. Uh... Robinson there did that more with timing, using the pace of the ball, just picking it up, rolling the wrist, and the right hand coming in. Beautiful shot. There he goes. Great cheer from the Knots fans. Half century for Paul Johnson, but much more importantly, he's given his captain tremendous support in this partnership. Pachit they shout, he's caught it. He misses it. He lay there as if he was clutching gold. In fact, it was fresh air. 
Well, not an easy chance, but certainly a definite chance for Neil Foster there. Paul Johnson picking this up, he did pretty well. And Foster probably not getting quite quick enough, but it's not the easiest to pick it up against this crowd in the background, but he's certainly got his hands to it. And the ball going through for four runs. Oh, he's bowled him. Well, what a strange little chassis down the wicket that was. Well, you can see the relief on the Essex players. They were delighted how they gathered around Foster with that wicket. But Paul Johnson, they're very annoyed with himself. They've done all the hard work, got there to win the game. But that'll be all right. He's going to be better giving himself a little bit of room and hitting on the offside rather than swinging away on the on. A very good puller and hooker of the ball, Derek Randall. A lovely fluent offside player. Oh, here's trouble if he hits. Yes. Now, that is not good. Randall has called Robinson for the quick single there. Robinson's gone, but from halfway down the pitch, he was always going to be in strike. Only needed a good pick up and throw, and the not skipper was struggling. Well, what a sad way to go. Played so well, got them back in the game. He's the one that really had to score the runs. And the last thing he wanted was a run out. Hundred and sixty two for four now. A run out. The man behind the stumps there, a lovely pick up from uh, Mike Garnham. Man the non strikers end, Derek Randall. I should think on the edge of his nerves at the moment. And he's gone first ball. Well, you can't call it quite a chain of disasters, but at least it's two links in the chain. Stevenson, first ball, quarter short mid wicket. Caught by Gooch, away to his left hand side, and now Essex have taken control. And that's the start for Derek Randall. Got to take full advantage of uh, this final over from Miller. Goes down the wicket. Miller does the right thing, get, tries to get it in at his legs, and it's a good shot. Times it well. On comes JK. Eight overs, two maidens, two for 15. Not quite where Derek Randall intended it. But don't worry about a thing. Now, uh, the comparison, there's not much in it after 49 overs. And Notts have five wickets in hand. Two of them had a go at it. Foster and Lever. And it got through both. Good shot by Evans. It's a half volley. Straight. Two despairing dives, and neither fielder succeeds in stopping it. That rate will stay at uh, eight per over. Five wickets in hand, 40 from five needed. 
And the comparison between the two sides at the same time, that was after 50. Nothing at all in it. It was hit pretty firmly, but I don't think it hit the ground on the way back. It hit Lever's hand, so it goes down as a mischance. And they took a single. And that's what the bowler hates, and the captain hates even more. And it flies off the edge. Now that situation David Acker was talking about applies again with a four early in the over. Yes, the job has been done. I think that's seven off the over so far. actually be fielding there without a cap but there you go goes in the air he times it well it goes pretty quickly but uh, John Lever doesn't quite hang on to it and uh, the result is a single that's a pretty good shot run out well what a combination of fielding brought that about a terrific blow by Evans down the ground Pringle goes across and so does Pritchard there's the throw and Gooch sizes it up brilliantly Waits for it to come, gets it just at the right moment. He couldn't wait any longer, had to make the dive. And now it's 221 for six. Oh, it's in the air and away over the top. Brother. In the air, Mark War caught it. <laughs> Safely held at the ball coming out of sunshine. And into shadow, Mark Waugh has held the catch off Pringles bowling. It's 234 for seven. Randall goes to rapturous applause, 49. Well, this is the shot. He picks it up pretty well, but he gets right underneath it. Wars out at deep square leg. He had a long time, and there was a deathly silence all around him until he caught it. And that was a pressure catch, if ever there was one. And he caught it well. Eddie Hemmings, experienced campaigner. Perhaps not the quickest between the wickets these days, but very experienced at improvising. And indeed, there are now two, two players who have seen a fair amount of cricket in their time. Eddie Hemmings and Bruce French. French has strike. John Lever will bowl. He's already put down two catches. Saved a single. Jeff Miller.
Hemmings has got it away. They're going to go for two. Hemmings will have to move quickly. French was having no mercy. Lever with the attempted Yorker. It's a full toss. Hemming flips it away. It's Foster with a good arm, but as he throws, he slips. It lacks the power. French had just set off for two, had nominated two before at Riverboat. And Hemmings is struggling, but he makes it. Six to win from four balls. And they're taking the single. As clever on French's part. Fumble from Garnham, but I don't think it'd have got French anyway. Yeah, watching French here, he'd really set off when the ball was bowled. They'd obviously once again nominated the decision that if Hemmings missed it, French would run. Five from three balls. Now, if ever a bowler has wanted a dot ball, it's now. And he's got it. And that was a, an excellent delivery from J.K. following the batsman as he made room. French backs away, Lever follows. Perfect Yorker, and then attempts to run out at the other end, but he's got to bowl it there, his third man is up. We've already seen the odd Nick outside the off stump go for four, there's nothing to stop it. The third man is up, saving the single on the edge of the circle. And Lever has really got to bowl it, leg stump, middle and leg. He's got to go. Lever gets it into the block hole again. French does well. He digs it out. There's never two, although French looks as if he again has just decided, and then he finally decides that discretion is the better part of valor. Hemmings is caught in two minds and just puts his back back in time. Well, I really think he had to go for the two there. The throw dragged the keeper away, as it was, and the pressure might have induced the fumble, as it is... Eddie Hemmings has to hit four of the last ball. A couple of uh, old stages, really. Eddie Hemmings and J.K. Lever. Uh, they must wonder what they're doing at the age of 40 or more, uh, rushing around in these games. But uh, tremendous contest now. The third man has now gone back. They cannot afford to have Hemmings squish it off the outside edge for four. And therefore, somebody's got to come up, and the big decision is who's got to come up to make the four in the circle. Pringle is being moved. He's coming into the act because he is vice-captain, and War is going across to a deep area because he's a fast fielder. Well, Hemmings will have to work on the fact here that it is most unlikely Lever will do anything but bowl a Yorker around about middle and leg stump. I'd suggest that he has to try and hit it on the full. Interesting thought, Richie, is suppose he pretends to back away the batsman and then steps in front and Lever is bowling down the leg side. Can he get a wide out of it? Would that be a subtle ploy to get an extra ball or am I being too devious? I'll go for the trying to hit it on the full bit. If we ever, ever get going again out there. Lever and uh, Gooch can't agree. The third man has been up and down like a fiddler's elbow. And now fine leg is coming in inside the circle well here we go last ball 
He's got it away. It's four. Hemmings has hit a four from the last ball. And Nottinghamshire have won the Benson and Hedges Cup of 1989. What a finish. It's hero time. Well, they've pummeled him and knocked him. And he's still there, Eddie Hemmings. And a win for Knotts off the very last ball of the day. Superb entertainment for a capacity crowd here at Lords. Nottinghamshire beat Essex by three wickets. Well, who would have thought that when Nottinghamshire made such a sticky start and then lost those three wickets right in the middle all at once? And yet there were fine innings, were there not, from Tim Robinson, his 86 leading the way, and a partnership of 132 with Paul Johnson, and fine efforts at the back by Derek Randall and by Evans, 26 not out. Hard luck then for Essex, some of them bowled extremely well. Derek Pringle, one for 38, and Neil Foster, one for 40, John Lever, two for 43, and the result, I'm afraid, is the win for Knotts, no luck for Essex, Knott's first Benson Hedges Cup. They won by three wickets. Well, I must say it was a, a marvellous game to watch. It was suspense and exciting towards the end. And who thought the two 40-year-olds, Eddie Hemmings and John Lever, would be involved in the last and final showdown. But it's great news for Knott's. It's their first Benson Hedges Cup and their captain, Tim Robinson, winning the gold award.